Now let us look at what is a projectile. Okay, because we are going to study about projectile motion. So anything that is thrown and left, left basically means it's only gravity that is acting on it. That is a projectile. So for example, if I throw this ball up, I threw it. After that I left it, right? So when I was throwing, it is not a projectile. But after I have left it, it goes up and comes back down. That's a projectile. Dropping a ball, projectile. Because I left it. If I throw this ball like this and it goes up and comes down like that, that's a projectile. If I threw it horizontally and it comes down like this, that's a projectile. But a crow flying is not a projectile. Why? Because it's powered. It's actually use, using its muzzle power, which is basically wing power, to project, basically keep, propel itself. So it's not a projectile because it has not been thrown. It is not moving under gravity. An aeroplane that is moving from one point to another is not a projectile. So we have to keep in mind projectile does not mean parabolic path. Because if I took this ball and I moved it from here to there physically, it might be moving in a parabolic path. That doesn't make it a projectile. But if I throw it, whatever it does, that is a projectile. So I hope that is clear. Now, today we are going to study about the central principle of projectile motion. Once you understand it, you can actually start applying this to lots and lots of different types of problems. The idea is very simple. If I drop this ball, this ball takes some time to come down, right? If I throw this ball horizontally, the question is, it may go there and fall. How much time does it take to reach that same place? So the question is this. I have this ball and I'm dropping this ball. I have a second ball here and I'm going to throw this ball. So this ball has been thrown with a velocity of, let us say, 3 meters per second. Right? And this ball was dropped. Now, it turns out that the ball that was dropped, whatever time it takes to reach this ground, let's say, exactly the same time is what this ball will also take to reach the ground. It is very fast, faster than this. Well, this 3 meters is not very fast, but I could make it very fast. I could make this 13 meters per second. I could make this 100 meters per second. If I make this 100 meters per second, it will go very far. It will go there but it will take exactly the same time to hit the ground. If this fellow took two seconds to hit the ground, this will take two seconds to hit the ground. Now, if I threw another ball, let us say I threw it this way, and I threw it with five meters per second, that fellow is going to go even further, more distance than that. But that will also take the same time as this fellow, so that will also take two seconds. If in this direction now I throw another ball, all of this is, are being thrown at the same time. Suppose I threw a ball, let us say with 10 meters per second. This guy is going to start and go really far. But the time it takes to hit the ground is exactly the same 2 seconds. Now, this may not, this is something that you have to start believing. And the best way to do this is to see an experiment where we show this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw two balls. One faster and one slower, you will see that they actually take the same time to hit the ground. So let us try that out and see. Now what we are going to do is I am going to basically give this fellow a velocity, but I am going to drop this other ball. Okay, So I hopefully will be able to do it at the same time. Watch what happens. They should hit the ground at the exact same time. One, two, three, go. So that now tells us, that if I throw this ball horizontally or if I drop this ball, they take the exact same time to hit the ground. Which means to find the time, I don't need to have a horizontally thrown ball. I can just have a vertically dropped ball. But you already know how to calculate the time for a vertically dropped ball. That's exactly what we are going to do for calculating uh, time for a projectile path. So now from the experiment, what did we learn? We saw that whether you are moving at 3 meters per second or 10 meters per second, you take the exact same time t seconds to hit the ground, right? And if I drop this ball, that means this starts with 0 meters per second, effectively I have dropped this ball. So this also takes the same time t to hit the ground. This gives you an idea for how to calculate how much time that will take. Suppose I want to say I am throwing at 3 meters per second, how much time does it take to hit the ground? Suppose you want to know that. You say it is the same time as dropping the ball. But for dropping the ball, do I know how to calculate the time? Yes, because if this height was h, let us say that this height was h, what is the initial velocity, vertical velocity? Because dropping the ball is straight line motion. 
you already know what is the initial vertical velocity 0 meters per second so how much time let us say it's traveling for t seconds so you know that s is equal to ut plus half a t square now this u is 0 because it's starting off with 0 velocity that ball is not starting with 0 velocity but that ball's time of fall is the same as this ball's time of fall but this ball did not have any velocity because I just dropped it okay so I'm only looking at the vertical motion so if I look at this it is half into g because a is g and we are going to right now assume g is 10 meters per second square so half into 10 into t square which is phi t square that must be equal to this height suppose I tell you the height was 20 meters then you will say immediately 20 meters is 5 into t square so you can divide 4 is equal to t square t is equal to 2 seconds so this ball takes 2 seconds to hit the ground so that ball takes 2 seconds to hit the ground is the logic of this clear to everybody so what we should do is to say recognize that if I throw it horizontally it takes the same time whatever the horizontal velocity including if it was 0 but if it is 0 it's very easy to calculate the time because phi t square is equal to h will immediately give me the time so suppose I tell you now I have a big building and I'm throwing a ball let us say with 7 meters per second how much time will it take to hit the ground and let us say the building height was 45 meters don't answer this question answer a different question because this time is t if i drop this ball what will be the time same t but this ball i already know the answer because this ball would have traveled phi t square in t seconds but i know it has traveled 45 meters so 45 must be equal to phi t square t square must be 9 t must be equal to 3 seconds for which ball for the ball that was dropped but our experiment shows that the ball that was dropped and the ball that was thrown both have the same time so if this fellow takes three seconds that fellow will take three seconds so it's super easy to find out what time a horizontally thrown ball is going to take because it is the same time as a ball that is dropped okay so this is a very very useful and important idea now before we continue i want you to understand this very strongly so suppose I have two balls, one I am throwing like this at 3 meters per second, one I am throwing like that at 5 meters per second. So now if the 3 meter per second ball takes 4 seconds to hit the ground, how much time will the 5 meter per second ball take? 4 seconds to hit the ground, everybody takes the same time. What if I throw the ball like that, also the same time, what if I drop it, same time. But if I throw the ball like that or if I throw the ball like this, not the same time, it has to be horizontal it could be zero okay both of them are fine now let us go to the next important idea again something that Galileo came up with and this is a very very useful and interesting idea because this is the second part to this central principle first part central principle is that horizontal velocity does not affect the vertical motion second part is that the fact you are moving vertically does not affect the horizontal velocity so the horizontal velocity is not affected by the fact that it is going down so let us look at that principle carefully now okay so now let us look at this new experiment that I am going to show unfortunately I won't be able to do this experiment okay because it's much harder to demonstrate directly in a classroom so but what we are going to do is just imagine that there is a big table okay and I have these two balls here and I'm giving both these balls this one is the ground and that is the table surface I give both the same velocity the problem I can't the reason I can't do the experiment is giving the same velocity is very difficult okay so just right below that let us say this was there and these two fellows were given the same velocity so then what happens is they're given the same velocity by the time this fellow comes here this would go there okay and imagine just imagine that there is no friction or anything else so this keeps going keeps going keeps going keeps going the question that comes up is when this fellow is right below this table right this fellow is right below the edge of the table this ball will come to the edge of the table why because they have the same velocity let me say that the velocity was 3 meters per second 
So both was both were given the same velocity, three meters per second. So they were three meters per second, three meters per second, three meters per second, three meters per second. At this point, what is the velocity? Three meters per second. At that point, that fellow has a horizontal velocity of three meter per second. Now, what do you think will happen if it continues moving? Now, till here they were both moving horizontally, right? Now. After this, what happens is this guy continues moving horizontally, but this guy is also going to come down. So this fellow is going to follow this path. So this guy's path looks like this, whereas this fellow's path looks like that. The question is, do these two fellows continue moving at the same rate? And the answer is yes. When this guy is here, this ball is right above that ball. When this fellow is here, this ball is right above that ball. And so, when this ball reaches this place, this ball is just going to hit it directly. So, the basic idea I want you to imagine is that this ball is moving like this, okay? And it is always right above that. And then when it comes down, it's going to hit it this way, okay? So, let me show you again. So, just imagine this thing because we cannot do it. So, this is how it is moving. And then that ball this ball has both a horizontal motion and a vertical motion but look at this ball this ball moved so much in the same time this ball moved the same amount horizontally it also moved vertically but the vertical motion did not affect the horizontal motion so what does that tell us that tells us that the fact that you are going down like you have gone down this much makes no difference because you would have gone horizontally exactly what this fellow did, which is basically what you would have done if there was no vertical motion. So it is as if the ball does not know it has a vertical motion. Its horizontal motion remains the same, exactly as before. But from here to there, what was the velocity? 3 meters per second. So when it is moving like this, it is moving at 3 meters per second. The speed does not change. Okay, so I want you to keep that also in mind. So there are two key principles. So this experiment shows us a very important principle. And the principle is horizontal velocity remains constant. It's not affected by, is not affected by the vertical motion. By vertical motion. Okay. This is a very important point to keep in mind. Horizontal velocity does not get affected by the fact that you have an acceleration downwards. And so what does that tell you? It tells you that the horizontal velocity remains constant. It is not affected at all. Okay. The earlier principle that we learnt was that vertical motion, the time it takes for example to fall, is not affected. So this is not affected by horizontal velocity. So this tells you, this and this together, what do they tell you? Vertical motion does not affect horizontal motion. Horizontal motion does not affect vertical motion. The horizontal motion and the vertical motion, they are independent. Okay. Now that's very, very powerful because that helps us solve a lot of problems. Let us see exactly how we will apply both of these principles in solving projectile questions. So now let us look at a question here. So for example, I have a building. Let us say that the building is of height. Uh, 45 meters. We have already done this calculation with 45, right? So you have a building of height 45 meters. Now I am going to throw a ball, let us say with a velocity of 20 meters per second. It's a lot of velocity. Now this ball is going to go and hit the ground somewhere there. And we are interested in finding out how far away does it hit. Okay, so this number usually we call it the range. So this is called range. We will later look at what other terms that we use for range. But this is the horizontal displacement of the ball. Okay. So if you want to know how much it has moved from the base of the building, how, how much horizontal, we call it the range. I want to know how much has it moved horizontally from the base of the building. So we can so do this problem in two ways, two parts. First, I am going to assume that there is going to be a ball that was dropped. So if the ball was dropped, it is going to take some time to hit the ground, right? That is the first principle. And so that tells us that if it takes t seconds to hit the ground, 
it would have traveled a distance of phi t square. Phi t square must be 45. So therefore t must be equal to 3 seconds. For which ball? For the ball that was dropped. But the ball that was thrown also takes 3 seconds. This is the first principle. Because whether you throw it horizontally or you drop it, the time is the same. Then the second principle, the fact that this ball is coming down does not matter. So imagine another ball or this same ball, if it was going horizontally and there was no gravity, it would have gone at constant velocity, right? Correct? It would have gone at constant velocity. What would have been the velocity? 20 meters per second. Now, it is doing that even though it is coming down, it is as if it was going at constant velocity. Remember the experiment where the ball was rolling and the ball that was moving? Now, when that fellow comes down and this one goes like that, they are basically going with the same velocity. So, that means the velocity of this ball is 20 meters per second. For how long? For 3 seconds. So, that means this must be 20 meters per second into 3 seconds. So, this distance must be equal to 60 meters. But that is for a ball which had no gravity. It was going horizontally with uniform velocity. That, this you already know. But this, basically the central principle tells us that this ball and this ball have the same horizontal motion. And this ball and this ball have the same vertical motion. Okay. So that means when the ball here is here, this ball is there. So therefore, this ball's distance r is also equal to 60 meters. So let us go back, quickly look at what are we doing. We are trying to solve one question, but we are breaking that up into two questions. We are saying this fellow's time is equal to this fellow's time. You drop the ball, however much time it takes, that is the same time as this. Then you say this guy's horizontal position, this ball's horizontal movement is the same as that ball's horizontal movement. If there was no gravity, it would have gone horizontally with constant velocity. That is what this ball also does horizontally. When that ball reaches this place, this yellow ball would have reached the same place. When that ball reaches that place, the yellow ball would have reached this place. So the horizontally moving ball with no gravity and the ball which has gravity and the horizontal velocity both move the same amount horizontally. The fact that this fellow has an extra vertical motion does not affect its horizontal motion. So in 3 seconds it would have moved horizontally 60. The vertical motion, the gravitational force basically adds to it the vertical displacement but does not affect the horizontal displacement. So I hope that is clear. 